Hello and welcome to another episode of Vedic Astrology with Renu. On the hero's journey, danger lurks on every corner. The hero will either be courageous, reckless, cautious or scared, depending on how Mars is functioning in our story. In this video, we're going to look at how Mars supports our journey, as well as why he's the most important parameter in judging relationship karma. Joseph Campbell was talking about the Mars archetype when he said that the hero is one who can participate in a fight decently, in the way of nature, not in the way of personal rancor, revenge or anything of that kind. In a recent study at Harvard University, Massachusetts General Hospital, researchers found a correlation between cortical thickness in brain regions associated with decision-making particularly in the anterior cingulate, and those who tended towards more impulsiveness, drive, and passion for novel and intense experiences and risky behavior. The researchers pointed out that there is likely no universally optimal temperament, and the lack of caution and self-control and impulsivity has its own downside, but it's not necessarily all bad especially in the context of our ancestors living in harsh environments, these were very useful genetic traits for securing food, survival, and reproduction. Mars is that imprudent rash planet that is both feared and esteemed in the Vedic culture. His rulership of Aries represents the power of the individual initiative and self-reliance. In Western mythology, Mars is called the Roman god of war. Similarly, in Hindu mythology, he is the god of war Kartikeya, son of Shiva and Parvati, who killed a demon no one else could defeat when he was just seven days old. Critical thinking helps us develop rational evaluations of a situation. Mars is not all that useful for critical thinking. He acts first and thinks later. He also has a very high threshold of pain. Both of these traits help the hero spur into action. Without them, the risks will almost always outweigh the rewards, and we will not answer the call of adventure and forge our unique path in life. In Sanskrit, Mars is called Mangalaya, or the auspicious one, because he gives longevity and is said to be able to defeat all enemies, including the dangers inherent in nature. In medical astrology, Mars shows the health of the adrenal glands and the immune system that fights off enemy pathogens. In Sanskrit, Mars is also called Lohit or red-colored. Loha also means iron, so he's also iron-bodied, signifying both his protective iron armor as well as his rulership over the condition and strength of blood iron. If Mars is not well disposed, he can indicate immune system, and blood-related disorders. Mars in our horoscope shows what turns us on, what we are passionate about, and where we get all fired up. The word martial in English comes from Mars. Mars has strong physical and mental stamina, but not always the statesmanship required for leadership like the other masculine planet, the Sun. Mars is also crucial for spiritual practice, as he is the tapas, or the heat and discipline required for sustained spiritual practice. The spiritual path requires Mars's courage and risk-taking and one-pointed commitment, because when Mars makes up his mind, you cannot negotiate with him. Of course, if not well disposed, he also risks becoming dogmatic and fanatic. So let's now briefly look at the placement of Mars. Mars gives best results in the action-driven houses 3, 6, and 10, and the signs of Gemini, Virgo, and Capricorn that require courage in defeating opponents. While critical thinking may not be Mars's best suit, Mars in these houses and signs can be great at logic, which requires stringing a set of theories or arguments together so they make sense. A strong Mars here makes for great lawyers, engineers, scientists, and politicians. 
Mars is debilitated or asleep in the highly sensitive and emotional moon sign of Cancer. Mars's military mind and emotions don't always mix very well. Like a good soldier, he functions best if he does not pause or hesitate and check in with his feelings. Mars is also not the energy you want to bring into the tenderness required by the moon and Cancer. Mars is exalted or fully awake in the earth sign of Capricorn, ruled by Saturn. He also thrives in the corresponding 10th house. Under these circumstances, his impetuous and thorny nature is tempered by Saturn's caution and grounded by the earth element. Mars's stamina and Saturn's perseverance is a winning formula for achieving at everything from athletics to business success. Mars is a fiery or pitta planet, so he's at home in the fire signs of Leo and of course in his own fire sign of Aries. He's also at home in the first house or ascendant, which shows our self-reliance and self-identity. But adding fuel to fire, these placements can be volatile for him, especially if conjunct Rahu, Ketu or Saturn and without a gentle planet supporting and softening his stance. Mars prospers in Jupiter's signs, especially the fire sign of Sagittarius, and in conjunction with Jupiter, as his influence takes Mars's single-mindedness and absorbs Jupiter's righteousness and discernment. In the 12th house in Pisces, Mars often struggles as he gets stifled and searches for an outlet for all his energy. In Scorpio and the 8th house, his energy finds the maximum outlet and he will challenge himself to do the impossible. Mars's impatience and anger and frustration is not always directed outwards. It's often directed inwards at ourselves as we use this energy to beat ourselves up and commit acts of rage against our own body and mind. You can't really talk about Mars without also talking about his influence on our interpersonal relationships. He's one of the most important parameters in Vedic astrology for difficult relationship karma, just as Venus is for the success of relationships. In Indian mythology, Mars as the war god Kartikeya has a brainy and intellectual brother Ganesh, who used his mind to win over both the brides presented to them by their parents. Kartikeya was so angry that he left to go and meditate in the Himalayas and became a hermit. This shows two sides of Mars, both reclusive and passionate and longing for relationships, but often disappointed in love. Certain positions of Mars in the horoscope are considered highly detrimental to relationship karma. This has led to a deep-rooted fear in the Indian culture of having the dreaded planetary affliction called Mars Flaw, or what is commonly referred to as Manglik. Sometimes it's also called Kuja Dosha. People born with Mars in houses 1, 4, 7, 8, or 12, and some also include the second house, have the Mars Dosha, or Flaw, called Manglik. One of the solutions astrologers have proposed to this fault in our stars is to marry someone who is also Manglik. Theoretically, there is merit to this method as it balances out assertive pressure on both sides. But in reality, sometimes with both partners under the influence of a headstrong Mars, it's easy to see how relationships can eventually turn into tension, unending arguments, and a war that no one wins. Considering that the placement of Mars in close to half of the houses in the chart is not considered productive for long-term relationships, Manglik seems rather an ineffective parameter as it will discount 30 to 40 percent of people on this planet. Even with all the cancellation rules in Vedic astrology, at least a quarter of the world population will have this difficulty. Still, this ancient concept of Mars' flaw, or Manglik, 
has much to teach us about navigating our intimate relationships, mainly the importance of owning our Mars. The seventh house of relating and relationships in the horoscope is also the house of our open or known enemies, because our partnerships challenge our individuality and self-reliance that Mars relishes. According to Hindu custom, no marriage is sanctified until the groom ties a very special piece of jewelry around the bride's neck called a Mangal Sutra or the Mars string of beads, symbolizing the inseparable bond between the husband and the wife. This exclusive and very sacred necklace made of black and gold beads is never worn by unmarried women and very closely guarded by married women, much like the wedding band or ring in the West. The Mars necklace or Mangal Sutra is a reminder to both partners, even though it's the woman who wears it, that when we agree to create a union with another person, we have to surrender some of our Mars or our individuality, drive to win, to always be right and prevail in our point of view. If we are truly meant to carve only our unique path in life, we are better served to go at it alone, which is the reclusive side of Mars. Many hero stories also have this narrative. So practice being a good loser from time to time and see your relationship thrive and you won't have to worry about being a Manglik or not. Or use your Mars, take the risk and leave a relationship that's not salvageable. In today's world, most of us no longer have to confront the harsh natural environment of our ancestors. It's unlikely that we will find ourselves face to face with an enemy in a life or death situation which Mars was designed for. So we must use our Mars to have the courage to face down our own weaknesses, obsessions and compulsions and put our ideals into action. An evolved Mars is the peaceful warrior. He has deeply studied the art of war. His strength is untouchable. His ethics are impeccable. One of my favorite hero myths from Joseph Campbell's collection is the story of the samurai warrior who had the duty to avenge the murder of his overlord. Once he cornered his foe, he was about to kill him with his sword when the man spat in his face. The samurai walked away. Why? Because he was angry. And if he killed a man in this condition, it would be a personal act and not the one he was trained for, nor the one he came to do. It's not that Mars' anger and rage are always bad, but the motivation behind them makes all the difference. As Campbell said, nothing is just a means to an end. Every action is an end in itself. The path is the destination. It's the journey that matters. <laughs>